Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Ushley here, and it's time for my long-awaited Black Friday book haul. I have been highly anticipating this. I've had these books, these packages from Book Outlet for, oh my gosh, over two weeks now, and I just haven't had time to film this with NaNoWriMo going on last month, and just like the holidays, and working all these hours a week. It's It's been hectic, you guys. Rolling up my sleeves and ready for this haul. I haven't done a haul in a while. I did do a haul during my NaNoWriMo vlogging, just like a, an accumulative, accumulative haul of books that I bought recently, so I will link that right now if you wanna go check that out. But I haven't done like a real, like full on, I bought a whole bunch of books at the same time, formal haul in forever. So I'm so hyped because these are some of my absolute favorite videos to film. I know hauls are very controversial here on YouTube and on booktube as well, but I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I love these videos. Like I'm obsessed. So can you tell I'm excited? I'm so hyped. I've got my scissors and I've got, oh my gosh, I'm breathing hard. I need to, I need to calm down. I've got my book out at all here. Oh. Oh my gosh, so the first batch I bought the week before the Black Friday sale, the second batch I bought during the Black Friday sale. And I like did this whole thing that Book Outlet was doing where you had early access to the sale on Wednesday. So you know I was on that and the site was crashing. It was very frustrating. <gasps> I go over it in my um, NaNoWriMo vlog if you wanna check out my frustration, but it's fine. They're here now. They've been here. Let's go. Let's go. Opening the boxes. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try to do this. Okay, so this is the first package I've got, and this was the, were the books I ordered like the week before the Black Friday sale. <laughs> it's open. You know they give you that list with all the books. We know. They give you this super annoying thing. Why? You know. Oh! Okay, right here on top, I have Anne of Green Gables, and this is by Ellen Montgomery. This is probably my third. Sorry if you feel the camera shaking. Teddy is just ruining lives right now. Ruining lives. But um, this is my third edition of Anne of Green Gables, and I don't care. I don't care. It's beautiful. I've been eyeing this edition for quite some time. Hi. Uh, oh, okay. I love you, but this is not your time. Always wants attention. But yes, Anna Green Gables, I've been eyeing this particular edition for a while now, so I finally copped it once I saw it. It's so beautiful. It's gorgeous, darling. See if you can see. Hi. Focus back on me. Okay, so just to show you guys how psychotic I am, I got another version of Anne of Green Gable series, and this is Anne of Avonlea. I don't remember what number this is in the series. Oh, two, it says so right there on the spine. So this is book two, and then I also have Anne of the Island, which is book three, and I have Anne's House of Dreams, which is book five. So of this particular version, which is so beautiful and so wonderfully illustrated and so whimsical, I couldn't help it, I have two, three, and five. I'm sure I will look for one and four at some point. You know, Book Outlet likes to play games with us and doesn't like to put all of the series in order on their site. They're very sporadic with it, and when they do put all of the series of any book series on their site, they're gone like that. So, you know they be playing games with us, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm trying to put them back in the boxes because I want them to stay organized because I've literally run out of rooms for books in this tiny little room that I'm holding at my parents' house. Okay, so now I saw this and I had to get it because Riverdale has definitely reignited the passion and interest in the Archie comics for a lot of people. I have been into the Archie comics since I was a kid. I was obsessed with them. They used to have them like in the grocery store aisles. You know like when you're checking out that aisle where the checkout is, they would they used to have the Archie comics up there and I would kind of like 
finesse my mom like we would go grocery shopping and I'd wait until we got all the way to the counter and then I would just kind of grab one of the comics and slip it into the cart and they were fairly inexpensive so then it would get rung up with all the other multitude of groceries my mom was getting and ladies and gentlemen children under 18 that is how you finesse your parents <laughs> to buy you things that they don't even realize they're buying you but yes yeah, so this is Archie thousand page mega comic digest over a hundred classic stories very exciting and oh uh, and you know what people ask me am I a Betty am I a Veronica I feel like that's a very unfair question to ask any woman every single woman is a little bit of both right come on can we be multifaceted please Okay, so the next thing I have in here is I wanted a paper copy of Binti by Eddie Okorafor. This is a book that I already have a copy of via Kindle, but I wanted to have a physical copy because I really did enjoy this read. Oh, I'm smarter than I thought. I have book one. So, rewind. Looks like I copped books one, two... Let's see. Now I gotta go back. That's the thing with Book Outlet. They just be packing these books in here in any particular order. Okay, so I do have book one, Anne of Green Gables. I really love these illustrations. So book one is Anne of Green Gables. And then book two, Anne of Avonlea. I'm trying to get the camera to focus. Book three, Anne of the Island don't have book five and then book I mean don't have book four and then book five Anne's House of Dreams can you guys see this I hope so because the illustrations are so pretty it'd be really sad if you guys couldn't really see them clearly okay okay I knew what I was doing I knew what I was doing why do I doubt myself I don't know excuse the background noise it's winding down time it's like past 8 p.m. so it's my fault for filming at this time. Another Archie Comics collection. This is Archie Giant Comics Medley. So this is 480 pages full color collection. So I'm not really sure what the like focus of this is. I think this is just a medley of just like different stories. But 480 pages. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to rediscovering these this comic series then I have another book by Neri Okorofor and this is Akata Witch I've been wanting to read this particular series I think it's Akata Witch and Akata Warrior so far I believe so I saw this on the site and I decided to you know grab it up and then the last book in this box is a book that I have been eyeing for over a year and that is Behold the Drina what behold the dreamers by Mbolo Mbui I'm, I'm guessing that's how you say his last name or her last name oh my gosh Mbolo is a girl she's from Cameroon Mbola Mbui that's that would be my guess but yes behold the dreamers I've been eyeing this for a minute now and I'm excited to finally have it in my hands and to have a book that takes place in I think it takes place in let's see Okay, it's about a Cameroonian immigrant living in Harlem. So that's got to be interesting. To provide a better life for himself, his wife, Nini, or Nenny, his wife, Nenny, and their six-year-old son. So that's got to be good. I love reading first-gen stories. Okay, so now on to box number two. This is the actual order I put in on during Black, the Black Friday sale. Just opening the box. And I don't want to hold it up because it's really heavy. I know, there's like a pleasure that comes from like watching people open boxes, but I ain't trying to break my arms today. Okay let's see what the goodies are and it's crazy because it's like do you guys ever just forget what books you've ordered because it happens to you okay 
So right on top I have one of the books that actually took me by surprise when I read it back, I want to say in 2016 I read it. 15 or 16, I can't quite remember, but there was a slight buzz about it on booktube and I remember just kind of picking it up out of curiosity and then I ended up really enjoying it and I was really taken aback by how much I did enjoy it. And this is the first book in a series and it's Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. I definitely recommend this book. It does deal a lot with religion, which I really enjoy books that incorporate religion into them and it is a fantasy as well. But it has, it's a fantasy, but it also has like a strange, strangely dystopian vibe to it. So yeah, it's interesting, but I really enjoyed it. So I saw the first book and I've been wanting to reread this series for a while now because I really did enjoy it. And I feel like the first time I read it, I didn't give it a fair chance because I went into it with such... I don't want to say negative expectations but definitely low expectations and now that I know what I'm getting and I know what the contents of this novel are I want to go back into it with like a fresh perspective newer eyes reread it and truly get like something more out of it so that's why I reread books because I tend to get more out of it you know the second third fourth time I read you always notice new things you always kind of start to connect the dots and see how the plot is coming together earlier in the novel you know, sometimes you find plot holes that you didn't notice before or you find like little hidden gems or clues or um, little just like little breadcrumbs that the author is kind of putting, leading down a trail, you know, to whatever it is they want you to discover. I don't know. It's just I really enjoy that kind of thing. So that's why I love rereading. But I've been really craving this series recently. So when I saw the first book on Book Outlet, I knew I had to grab it. Next up is... Pride, Prejudice, and Mistletoe because I was really looking for like a Christmassy holiday type read. I like to collect them around this time of year because it's very cozy and nice to read Christmassy holiday type reads around this time. And this one is by Melissa De La Cruz who I believe she wrote like some vampire series if I'm not mistaken. It was like a series about vampires. Yeah, the Blue Blood series she wrote. Okay, so that's, that's the one that I know her the most for. But this is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. And let's see, Darcy is a woman in this one. So Darcy Fitzwilliam is 29, beautiful, successful, and brilliant. She dates hedge funders and basketball stars and is never without her three cell phones, one for work, one for play, and one to throw at her assistant. Just kidding. Or is she? Darcy's never fallen in love, never had time for anyone else's drama, and never goes home for Christmas if she can help it. When her but when her mother falls ill, she goes home to Pemberley, Ohio to spend the season with her family. Her parents throw their annual, annual Christmas bash where she meets Luke Bennett, the smart, sardonic slacker son of their neighbor. Luke is 32 and has never left home. He's a carpenter who makes beautiful furniture and is content with his simple life. He comes from a family of five brothers, each one less ambitious than the other. When Darcy and Luke fall into bed after too many eggnogs, Darcy thinks it's just another one night stand. But why can't she stop thinking of Luke? What is it about him? And can she fall in love or will her pride and his prejudice against big city girls stand in their way? So it's a pretty short, cute little read, nice Christmassy holiday type of vibe. It sounds like they flipped the characters, which is really interesting and something I haven't seen personally before in a Pride and Prejudice retelling. So now we have Darcy as the girl and Bennett or Luke Bennett as the male. So that's going to be cool. All right. Next up is another book that I've been eyeing for, I would say about a year, a little over a year now. It's been in my Amazon cart. You know when you have something in your Amazon cart and then you hit save for later and then you put it back in your cart and then you put it back and save for later and it's just like this dance that goes on for for the for till the end of time basically but this book is piecing me together by renee watson and i think it's a children's book or at least it has a character that is younger and it says Jade believes she must get out of her poor neighborhood if she's ever going to succeed. Her mother tells her to take advantage of every opportunity that comes her way, and Jade has. Every day she rides the bus away from her friends and to the private school where she feels like an outsider, but where she has plenty of opportunities. There's also at least one opportunity that she doesn't really welcome, 
Woman to Woman, a mentorship program she joins on the promise of a scholarship. Just because her mentor is black and graduated from the same high school doesn't mean she understands where Jade is coming from. She's tired of being singled out as someone who needs support, someone people fix. Jade wants to speak, to create, to express her joys and sorrows, her pain and her hope. Maybe there are some things she could show other women about understanding the world and finding opportunities to be real, to make a difference. In this story about a girl striving for success in a world that feels too often like it wants to break her, Renee Watson once again delivers a thoughtful and relevant novel that explores issues of race, privilege, and relationships. And I think that is excellent. I think this is definitely a story that is overlooked. And also that idea and that stereotype that all black people, right, that all, all black people have the same history, have the same experience, have the same background, culture, language, um, vernacular, just, you know, it's very uncomfortable. I remember growing up, I was always put in spaces where I was a minority because I was either in accelerated classes, on accelerated track in school, I went to a university that was primarily a white university, and a lot of times I found myself in classrooms and spaces where I was a minority, but there would be other black people around me. And I just remember how we were just seen as a monolith and we were all lumped together and it was just assumed that we were all the same and we all had the same story and there was just one experience, the black experience, period. And, you know, it just became very frustrating because, you know, we're each trying to be individuals, trying to be our own human authentic selves. We each have different backgrounds, different histories. We come from different places. We've experienced different things. We have different ideas, different ideologies, you know, different religions, different, just so many differences, you know, and the commonality, the color of our skin is wonderful. And sure, maybe we have some personality similarities or similar interests or hobbies, but the point is that we are not the same and we kept being seen as the same by the majority and it was just very frustrating. So I definitely understand that feeling of, you know, just because, you know, there are two black women put into a space and one is supposed to mentor another or just any situation where you have a minority group in a setting where the majority kind of looks at them and there's a small amount of them and it's just it doesn't mean that we're all the same you know even just the black experience even in america is not the same black and african-american are not always synonymous you know certainly they can be but not always we have black jamaicans we have you know a myriad of blacks from across the diaspora and from different countries on the continent of africa so it's just Blacks live all over the world. We have black Alaskans. And so it's just, we're everywhere. And so it's just frustrating. So I love the idea of this story because it's something that's not often articulated. And I like that this author is trying to, or is, you know, basically telling that side of things that doesn't always get seen or, or expressed. There we go. Ramble on. So excuse me problem I run into with having the majority of my books in storage is I can never remember which books I already have purchased and which ones I haven't so there's a chance that once I do finally get into a space where I can have all of my books on bookshelves that I will come into contact with duplicate copies of books and I do promise that when that day comes I will have a giveaway for all of my duplicates but I went ahead and picked up The Midnight Star by Marie Lu and this is a young elite novel and I just have this I have this sinking sensation in the pit of my stomach that I already own this book somewhere but just in case I didn't I went ahead and picked it up and this is a series I never completed so I definitely have a list of series that I never completed that I do want to complete and that is a video for another day so stay tuned for that but I do 100% want to complete the series I remember reading the young elites the young elites and being very impressed and just taken aback by how much I enjoyed it. So this is, I don't know if it's the sequel to The Young Elites or it's just part of the series, but I definitely wanted to make sure that I had it in my possession and I feel like I already have a copy of this, but we shall see. 
either way it's good news for y'all because i'll be hosting a giveaway in this box let's see i don't want to i have skive by neil schusterman and neil schusterman has a special place in my heart because i read the i can never remember the names of books and you guys know this never remember the names of anything unwind the unwind series i read that back oh my gosh it must have been was that in 2015 or 2016? I think it was 2015. And I was obsessed. That book was so good. And I have yet to f continue on with the series. Another series I need to complete. Add that to my giant list. But I have been eyeing this book for some time. I know it ha had some buzz on BookTube um, towards the beginning of this year. So I definitely wanted to go ahead and make sure I picked it up. I believe this book is about a society where there's... So here it is. It says... A world with no hunger, no disease, no war, no misery. Humanity has conquered all those things and has even conquered death. Now Skyves are the only ones who can end life and they are commanded to do so. Amber died story of my life. Okay, it says now Skyves are the only ones who can end life and they are commanded to do so in order to keep the size of the population under control. Citra and Rowan are chosen to apprentice, apprentice to a scythe, a role that neither wants. These teens must master the art of taking life, knowing that the consequence of failure could mean losing their own. They learn living in a perfect world comes only with a heavy price. And this is a Prince Honor book, so that's pretty cool. And let's see. Yep, that's pretty much it. I have been eyeing it for a minute, so excited to be holding it in my hands. Next up is another book that I have been kind of thinking about purchasing for at least a year minimum, and that is The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. And this one intrigued me mostly because of the premise. On the back it says, they lay for a while on their backs, gazing into the starry expanse through the railroad tracks, listening to the dark river below. This might be it, Dill thought. This might be the best your life ever is. Ever is ever is this moment right now i've read somewhere that a lot of the stars we see don't exist anymore they've already died and it's taken millions of years for their light to reach earth dill said that wouldn't be a bad way to die lydia said giving off light for millions of years after you're gone so this just seemed very i don't know what the right word is i'm thinking about it kind of gives me like you know that really good indie movie vibes that's what it's giving me um, it says, Dill has had to wrestle with Vipers his whole life, at home as the only son of a Pentecostal minister who urges him to handle poisonous rattlesnakes, and at school where he faces down bullies who target him for his father's extreme faith and very public fall from grace. The only antidote to all this venom is his friendship with fellow outcasts, Travis and Lydia. But as they are starting their senior year, Dill feel Dill feels the coils of his future tightening around him. The end of high school would lead I can't talk. The end of high school will lead to new beginnings for Lydia, whose edgy fashion blog is her ticket out of their rural Tennessee town. And Travis is happy wherever he he is, thanks to his obsession with the epic book series Bloodfall and the fangirl who may be turning his harsh reality into real life fantasy. Dill's only escapes are his music and his secret feelings for Lydia, neither of which he is brave enough to share. Graduation feels more like an ending to Dill than a beginning, but even before then, he must cope with another ending, one that will rock his life to the core. So this is Jeff Zetner's debut novel, and it says it provides an unblinking and at times comic view of the hard realities of growing up in the Bible Belt and an intimate look at the struggles to find one's true self in the wreckage of the past. So this just... Like I said, it gives me all those like indie movie vibes about like young kids growing up, coming of age, love it. Next is a book that, okay, so this book, there's a particular bookstagrammer that I follow. I think she also follows me on YouTube. So Curly Book Owl, I think, if you're watching this, hey. But yeah, I think her handle is Curly Book Owl. But she recently read this book and said that it took her by surprise how much she absolutely loved it. And I don't know why, every time she recommends a book, I just, I have to go buy it. It's crazy. I think the way she writes her reviews, they come across as so honest and raw that I just, I don't know. She just makes me buy, she makes me buy, she, 
she makes me buy she makes me buy books but this is afterlife by holly chase oh no the afterlife of holly chase by cynthia hand and in the back it says you know how the story goes right there's this old banker type named ebenezer scrooge who shuffles around saying bah humbug one christmas eve he's visited by the ghosts of christmas past present and future in the morning he wakes up like completely terrified and says to himself this is my chance i can change my future then he supposedly lives happily ever after it's a nice story but that's not how it happened to me <laughs> so in this book it says on christmas eve five years ago holly was visited by three ghosts who showed her how selfish and spoiled she'd become they tried to convince her to mend her ways she didn't and then she died now she's stuck working for the top secret company project scrooge as the latest ghost of christmas past every year they save another miserly grouch Every year, Holly stays frozen at 17 while her family and friends go on living without her. So far, Holly's afterlife has been miserable. But this year, everything is about to change. So I got this A because Curly Book Owl loved it and it took her by surprise how much she enjoyed. And also because it's also another Christmassy type read. So I'm hoping I get to it this holiday season. We'll see, but I hope so. But yeah. And then... Next up is The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord. This is another religious type read. Emery Lord, I really enjoy her books. I think the one that I really liked was Open Road Summer. I loved that book. It reminded me very much of like writing a book based off of a country star and I just had Taylor Swift in my mind the whole time. So that was cool. But it actually was about the best friend of the country star, which I thought was a nice little twist because usually it's about the star but this particular book was about the best friend and she goes on tour with her star of a friend for a summer and it changes her life so I really enjoyed Open Road Summer and so I've been looking to kind of collect more of her books because I really liked her writing style and so we have this book When It All Falls Apart Who Can You Believe In? Everything is going right for Lucy Hansen until her mom's cancer reappears just like that, Lucy breaks with all the constants in her life. Her do-good boyfriend, her steady faith, even her longtime summer church camp job. Instead, Lucy lands at a camp for kids who have been through tough times. As a counselor, Lucy is in over her head and longs to be with her parents across the lake. But that's before she gets to know her co-workers, who are as loving and unafraid as she so desperately wants to be. It's not just new friends that Lucy discovers at camp. More than one old secret is revealed along the way. In fact, maybe there's much more to her family and her faith than Lucy ever realized. In an emotionally charged and unforgettable story about love, loss, family, and friendship, Emery Lord's gorgeous writing shines a light through the darkest of times. On the back, it says a vividly drawn novel of how we believe, how it changes, and how it changes us. In Lucy Hansen, Emery Lord gives us a narrator so vibrantly real that by the last page, she felt like a friend I'd grown up with. Lucy's journey is as unforgettable as her voice. So that was blurbed by Anna Marie McLemore. Mc, McLemore? I don't know. She wrote a Morris Award finalist that I've never heard of. But I'm really excited. This definitely gives me Sarah Dessen vibes, who is one of my favorite young adult novels from ever since I was a kid, or young adult authors from since I was a kid. So yes, enjoying Emery Lord. So I'm glad I could get my hands on this one. Okay, moving right along, we're getting to the last stack in this box. Up front and center is Alex Approximately, a novel by Jen Bennett, and this just looks like a light, fun summer read, so I will probably pick this up in the warmer months, but this says the one guy Bailey Rydell can't stand is actually the boy of her dreams. She just doesn't know it yet. And it says classic movie fan Bailey Mink Rydell has spent months crushing on a witty film geek she only knows online as Alex. Two coasts separate the teens until Bailey moves in with her dad, who lives in the same California surfing town as her online crush. Faced with doubts, what if he's a creep in real life, or worse? 
Bailey doesn't tell Alex she's moved to his hometown or that she's landed a job at the local tourist trap museum or that she's being heckled daily by the irritatingly hot museum security guard, Porter Roth, AKA her new arch nemesis. But life is a whole lot messier than in the movies, especially when Bailey discovers those tricky fine lines dividing hate, love, and whatever it is she's starting to feel for Porter. As the summer months go by, Bailey must choose whether to cling to a dreamy online fantasy in Alex or take a risk on an imperfect reality with Porter. The choice is both simpler and more complicated than she realizes because Porter Roth is hiding a secret of his own. Porter is Alex. Approximately. So there you go. I'm looking forward to this. This looks light, fun, fluffy, just gives me all those summer vibes and the cover definitely helps with that. I was really in intrigued and attracted by the cover. So Then I picked up the next book in the... Um, what is this series called? Is it called Friday Lights? Until Friday Night series? I don't know, dude. But Under the Lights, I want to say this is the third book. And I might actually end up giving this away because I started collecting the book in hardback. And I didn't realize this was a paperback. And that's going to annoy me. Things like that annoy me. I don't know if they annoy you. Sometimes it doesn't annoy me. But I feel like with this one, because the feel of the paperback versus the hardback is so different it's going to annoy me but yeah this is just the next book in on in the until friday night series or no is it called the field party the field party that's the name of the series by abby glines so just had to go continue with the series next up is sisterhood of the traveling pants by ann brashers or bashars i can't remember how you say it but this is one of my favorite movies of all time. I really enjoy this film and I've watched it numerous times, especially as I was growing up when I was younger. I really enjoyed this movie. I think I saw it in theaters when it first came out. That's when I was first introduced to one of my favorite actresses, Blake Lively. I think that was her first major film. And then of course, um, what's her name from... From Gilmore Girls. Why can't I remember her name? I'm blanking on her name. Oh, this is so frustrating. And then, of course, we have America Ferreira was also in the film. And another actress that I really love. I can't remember names right now, but except for America Ferreira and Blake Lively. But, yes, I really enjoyed that film. So, I'm totally happy to have the book. I've never read the book before. I know it's a whole series. And this is just the first book in the series. I don't know if I will endeavor to read the complete series I know they did come out and brushers did come out with like the last book where they're all grown up and I think I bought that on book outlet a while back I can't remember but yeah now I have the first book in the series so I definitely want to go ahead with this I'm not gonna go over the synopsis like we all know the story of the sisterhood of traveling pants one pair of jeans four friends and magically fits them all they go their separate ways one summer they send the jeans to each other and like I said, it magically fits them all, and adventures ensue. There we go. Finally got my hands on Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Mayer, Meyer, I can never remember. But yes, she's one of my favorite young adult authors. I absolutely adore the Luna Chronicles series, and I have the Renegade series, but I haven't read it yet. So I definitely have been eyeing this for a, a long time, since it came out. I just... Never bought it for whatever reason, but now I have it in my hands. I believe this is an Alice in Wonderland retelling from the perspective of the Queen, the Red Queen. So that's cool. Yeah, in Heartless, the nonsense that is Wonderland gets a reverential makeover. Full of heart and its own idiosyncrat idiosyncratic character. That was blurred by Gregory Maguire, who, who wrote Wicked. If you've never read Wicked... You're not alone, but I love the Broadway musical. It's one of my favorites. I've seen it a few too many times from when I lived in the city. Let's see. Catherine may be one of the most desired girls in Wonderland and a favorite of the unmarried king, but her interests lie elsewhere. A talented baker, she wants to open a shop and create delectable pastries. But for her mother, such a goal is unthinkable for a woman who could be a queen. As a at a royal ball where Kath is expected to receive the king's marriage proposal, she meets handsome and mysterious and mysterious Just. For the first time, she feels the pull of true attraction. At the risk of offending the king and infuriating her parents, 
she and Jess enter into secret courtship. Kath is determined to choose her own destiny, but in a land of thriving with magic, madness, and monsters, fate has other plans. Ugh. I can't wait to see how she, like, retells this. She's the queen of retelling. So that's it. I, I don't even know how to attempt to hold up all of these books. I mean, we got the stacks going on. We got this stack. Freaking nails over here trying to lift these books. We got this stack. And we got this stack. That was the actual Black Friday book haul that I just held up all those stacks from. Now the other box. We got this stack. And this one. And this one. And I know there is kind of a pleasure of just like holding everything up at once but there's just no way you guys there's just there's just no way so i don't want to kind of have everything tumble and fall so that's why we're not doing that so that's it for my black friday book haul thank you so much for watching this video is going to be so long but i know you guys love watching long hauls so yeah that's it i will go and i will see you in my next video bye Bye, guys.